lives, everything is built around convenience, speed and efficiency. This is the way mankind has lived since the devastation of the Solar Pulse event in 2015. However, startling archaeological discoveries in the past few years have shown us a way of life prior to the event that was very, very different. In this series of programmes, we will look at how pre-event life differed for one specific social group, the Tribe of Burra. In this first programme, we'll be looking at how Burra man's life as a hunter-gatherer was far removed from our modern ways of eating. The diet of Burra man in the early 21st century was, by necessity, that of the hunter-gatherer. Armed with spears, knives and a curious metal frame bag on wheels to bring the spoils of the hunt home, Burra man would head out to bring back whatever food he could find in the wastelands around the Burra. These wastelands had become wild and uncivilised since the previous mass extinction event. The two staple foods and the source of Burra man's protein were the kebab and the parmesan. Not much is known about these beasts, but from documents preserved at the time, we have managed to get these artists' impressions. It is believed the kebab was a huge snake or worm-like creature. With no visible features such as eyes or a mouth, it is believed that the kebab fed by absorbing nutrients through its skin. From the wild herbs that grew in the fertile soil around the springs that fed into the teas, the so-called garlic sauce. These creatures are thought to have grown in lengths of up to 30 feet and were cooked on a special spit in short sections and distributed by the tribal chiefs to the rest of the tribe. The parmesan was a bird-like creature that migrated across the plains and scrublands in the area known as Wilton. As these artists' impressions show, they had a golden skin almost scaly, with scabrous areas of golden cheese-like tissue. It's believed by modern zoologists that this tissue, in conjunction with the subcutaneous layer of a white, syrup-like substance, protected the creature's inner organs from the terrible pollution and ever-increasing temperatures of the time. Again, the tribal chiefs would serve this up with a side salad to the rest of the tribe. But although the kebab and the parmesan were staple foods, Protein was not enough to keep Burraman going. Next, we'll look at how Burraman supplemented his diet in the strange area known as Supermarket. The Supermarket was a vast area with many different climates. From evidence found at archaeology digs in the region, it was possible to find here lush fields and fulsome orchards, side by side with harsh tundra regions. We believe that Burra Man also found other, non-food items in this vast Aladdin's cave of a place. For example, there is evidence of the gathering of apples and pears, which according to evidence found during the study of the southern Kokani tribe, were used in constructing a way of getting from one level of a dwelling to another. Clearly, the struggle for subsistence was not easy for Burra Man, and yet they survived and they endured. But sustenance was not the only obstacle they faced. In our next programme, we'll be looking at how this huge amphitheatre played host to regular battles for supremacy against rival tribes, the Maccams and the Geordies. <laughs>